And this year, um, but, well, when Mark and Nathan uh, Fund for Social Justice was uh, founded five years ago, we had raised about $5,000 and gave away $5,000. Uh, this year, about $20,000 has been distributed to a dozen grassroots organizations in Western Massachusetts. And yes, <laughs> applaud yourselves because it's thanks to you. And by the way, in parentheses, when you're done with your plates, you can leave them out here in the front. <laughs> Um, for example, um, neighbor to neighbor, are there, is there anybody from neighbor to neighbor here? Thank you. Neighbor to neighbor was, was one of the groups that was, that kept pushing to close the Mount Tom coal plant because there is no such thing as clean coal. So thank you, neighbor to neighbor. Um, Arise for Social Justice. I know Arise for Social Justice is here. Uh, there was a man, Charles, what's the, uh, give me the, Will Height, who was wrongly convicted of murder. And Arise for Social Justice agitated and pushed for that conviction to be overturned. So thank you, Arise for Social Justice. And um, I mean, we can go grantee by grantee, but we're just spotlighting three for now. Um, the Prison Birth Project. Is there anybody here from the Prison Birth Project? Well, are you from the Prison Birth Project? Okay, well thank you for being here because the Prison Birth Project agitated to make it, to just eliminate this barbaric practice of women who are um, pregnant este, in prison were being shackled at the time of giving birth. And the Prison Birth Project agitated and now we have legislation, correct? So that that practice ends forever. So thank you, Prison Birth Project. Um, and you know, the, the money that we este, raise from you, and please give more. If you gave today, give some more tomorrow. <laughs> So, because these are the organizations that we give money to so that they can do the things that we're talking about today. Whether it's to buy a copier, whether it's because they need transportation money. They're small grants, but they're very significant grants. They make a difference. Um, now I'm going to introduce my colleague, Hector, who's gonna talk about the other organizations um, that we support we supported this year. So let's give a big round of applause to Hector. Hi everyone. Hi. And welcome. How's the food? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, my, my name is Hector Figarella. I have been a board member with the Mark and Nathan Fund for about, this is my fourth year now. And um, I'm very happy and proud to be part of uh, this amazing group of folks that are doing uh, the work to raise the money to uh, help organizations that are here to do the very important work that you're doing. So I, I will very briefly uh, talk about uh, each grantee for this year's grantee. Um, so uh, I got Arise, Arise for Social Justice. Um, they are, uh, Natalia just talked about them a little bit, but uh, they, their grant is to um, do workshops. They're planning on doing five workshops. Uh, one of them is uh, Know Your Rights Workshop um, because the work they do is to making sure that people know their rights when encountering the police. Uh, uh, another workshop is to benefit, is to people to know the benefits of how to how to seal their quarry, and then the other the remaining workshops is up, is up to the members of the community to uh, to decide where you know what where the need is for those the remaining workshops. 
Uh, climate Action Now, uh, they're doing a climate action plan uh, focused on sustainability, livable and equitable communities, uh, expanding clean energy uh, and food and agriculture. Uh, just communities, are, are they here? Yes. Climate Action Now, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, just Communities, Comunidades Justas, are they here? No, no están aquí, okay. So yeah, Just Communities, uh, they started probably, I think it was last year, they're, they're working, uh, they're a small organization working for immigrant rights um, based on base building community organization, uh, fighting for immigrant justice uh, through leadership development, uh, political action and education. Uh, has to do with the Trust Act and also uh, trying to get immigrants to have driver's licenses so they can get to and from work. Um, and the Trust Act is, um, deals with, so, so that local, local, local police departments don't, basically the policy is through ICE, the, the uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement is, they're encouraging local police departments to, if, if they encounter an immigrant, to, uh, if they're arrested, to contact uh, ICE, and so this person can be deported. So the work that they're doing is to get, the Trust Act will, will encourage police departments to, to end that practice, you know? If, if, if that person has a problem with local law enforcement, it ends there. They don't have to uh, reach out to federal agencies uh, with whose purpose is to get the person deported and destroy the family unit. Uh, Manos Unidas, is Manos Unidas here? No, they're not, okay. So they're based out of the brochures and they're, they're, they're going to continue their very important work on their first bilingual people zine in the Berkshires. Uh, so they're doing great work out there, bringing people together. Uh, Springfield, no one leaves. I know I saw them earlier. Hey guys. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so they're organizing uh, people in, that have been affected by the, um, the housing crisis in Springfield. Uh, the grant is for the Springfield No One Leaves People's School uh, is to strengthen political education and leadership development. Sounds, sounds really wonderful. Um, neighbor to neighbor. Uh, thank you again, neighbor to neighbor. Uh, I'm just going through the notes. I, so the, you're going to, uh, uh, let's see, I have here creating creating movement for economic, social, and environmental justice in the city of Holyoke. Nuclear Free Future Coalition, there you are. Let's give them a hand. Okay, uh, I'll, you know, working for, towards the abolition of nuclear weapons and nuclear power. Can't go wrong with that. Thank you. Out now, out now. You guys here? Out now. Okay, so they're, they're continuing their support, um, supporting education and organizing project, using interactive theater uh, to, to further their, their work as a, a queer youth organization that, that promotes um, harm reduction. Okay, and uh, we just talked about the Prison Birth Project, so the grant is to uh, help them continue their very important work. Uh, Truck Rock Center for Peace and Justice. Where are you guys? There you are. Yeah. Providing leadership to end war and, and address environmental justice issues. And the, the grant will help you with 10 scholarships for youth in the, city, in the city of Springfield. Thank you so much for all of your work. South Holyoke Safe Neighborhood Initiative. No, they're not here, okay. So there, this is a, a coalition of um, a local, state, and federal agencies, uh, includes police, businesses, and nonprofit organizations working to create a more vibrant South Holyoke. Uh, also identifying at-risk at youth. Um, they're doing really, really amazing work down there. And this grant is gonna help. They already started a youth advisory board that will be incorporated, it's been incorporated into their, their pro, into their organizing. This would um, allow also to uh, give the kids um, uh, stipends, so for all the work that they're doing. Uh, so South Holyoke. Uh, Veterans Education Project, I uh, saw you guys earlier. Okay. So this is for education and public events, for social justice. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. And Voices from Inside, there you are. 
really an amazing work, uh, working uh, around creative writing uh, program for incarcerated women. Thank you so much. And, uh, and last but not, but not least, Western Mass Jobs with Justice. There you are, John. So at this end, the grant was to help them support their annual organizing education conference, which just took place, right? April. Yeah, it took place in April. So next, next March, you're all invited. Yeah, next March. So keep you know put that on your calendars, guys. <laughs> thank you so much all for being here, um, and thank you all, all to all the grantees for all the very important work that you do, and we really appreciate it. I know that it makes an impact, little by little. Everything, every every little bit counts. And I want to now hand it over back to Natalia Munoz. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Hector. You know, one of the great things about being part of the Mark and Nathan Fund for Social Justice is that, and being in this room with all of you, is because we all have this passion to make the wrongs right, to make things better, to leave a legacy that when we pass through this earth, we didn't just live and just go about and do our business. We tried to make it better. A, for people, not people we know necessarily, for people we don't know, for everybody. So one of the, I think I said this to Marty some time ago, maybe I said it to my therapist, I don't remember. <laughs> but I said that what I love about the Mark and Nathan Fund is that I get to channel my rage I, with all the injustices, and there are so many in the world, and help be part of something that makes life a more bearable or better, and este, so I'm really glad to be here. I'm very moved that you're all here today on this beautiful day, which I know just a lot of us would think, oh, no, let's just stay outside. Thank you for coming indoors today. Um, now I would like a, for a representative, please, from Arise from Social Ju for Social Justice. Um, to, can you talk a little bit about este, the work that you're doing for the benefit of all of us? Um, yeah. Oh, here, please, with the microphone. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, Ellen Graves. <coughs> Big round of applause for Ellen Graves. Hi. I'm one of the organizers at Arise. Um, we do a combination of things there. From We do a lot of criminal justice work, which thanks to Mac and Nathan Fund, um, has helped us be able to do that for the last three years, four years. Whoop, whoop, okay. <laughs> Okay, um, and we do the combinations. We work on that, get the criminal justice area against police brutality, against all the different parts of people going to court for something that the police really shouldn't have stopped them for. Um, on to, those, like you heard, the Childswell Height case where he was wrongly accused of a murder that he wasn't even at. And it took a number of years to win that case and have him free. Uh, we're working right now on a Yahoo case, a Yahoo, who is from um, a Muslim young man who's being framed because the police wanted him to be an informant and the, um, the FBI want him to be an informant. We work on low-income housing. Uh, we're right now trying to get a land trust established, working with the right to city, which means that everybody has a right to have a house. And I think in this day and age, and with the corporations having the power that they do, the people, the individuals are being forgotten and every person deserves a house, a roof over their head, and food. And these are the issues that we work on all the time. Um, being, everybody has that right, and we try to empower and have the people know that they have that right. Those are just some of the things that we work on. Doing. Thanks to the support from Markham Nathan Fund to shut down the Mount Tom coal plant. And we're going to start with a... <laughs> Um, and Mirangela is going to start by sharing a poem. And Mirangela is also a member of Voices from Inside. So you'll get to hear a poem that she wrote that relates to our organizing work. 
Again, my name is Marangela Tolliver, and I am a member of Neighbor to Neighbor as well as Voices from Inside. And I'd like to first and foremost thank every one of the people who donate to all of these different organizations. You guys really make a huge difference in the lives of people like myself and, and in the lives of yourself. Um, <clears throat> I wrote this a while ago and I wasn't really thinking too much about anything at the time except for crossing the line within my own mind. Now I'm seeing that um, we're on a line and trying to call, cross a line in everyday life and in the com lives of the communities. So uh, it's called On the Line. There is a line between having been there and I want to go there. Between living in the past and always thinking of the future.